Hey, so Warren Buffett just gave some wonderful life and investing advice that I think is so wonderful and uh, really genuine. And I wanted to make a special segment just to highlight some of my, my favorite parts of what Warren Buffett mentioned. Uh, first, uh, probably by far the biggest mention that I think will go uh, really uh, under uh, the, the news coverages uh, that is most people won't pay attention to it is that Warren Buffett's biggest goal in business is making sure that his companies are run by good people who basically do the right thing and provide a good or service that makes happy customers. That's it. And I, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. It's one of the things that I built my business on is the idea of providing value, provide more than what people are expecting, whether it's in uh, when, when I was working at Jamba Juice or Hollister as a real estate agent, as a real estate broker, hopefully as a YouTube content creator, in my courses, as a financial advisor, who cares, whatever it is. My goal is provide more than people are expecting. And I think Warren Buffett reiterates that exact notion. And he invests in businesses that do exactly that. For example, one of these incredible comparisons he makes is he makes this comparison of how people will go out of their way to pay more money for the next iPhone. He reveals that he has an iPhone. And even though he doesn't understand how the iPhone works, he understands that people are willing to pay a premium for that iPhone. And what he's really describing is pricing power. What is a product, a good or service, where people are willing to pay for it no matter what the price is? Is that potentially a Tesla with full self-driving? Is it an NVIDIA graphics chip? Is it AMD? Is it uh, the NVIDIA server chips? Or, uh, or, you know, is it an Enphase microinverter? Because people just have to have that particular quality microinverter over another. Who knows? But Warren Buffett makes a fantastic argument. If the company has a goal of making their customer happy, they win. And that's his only goal. He doesn't care about economic forecasts. He doesn't really care about the news cycle. He cares about the business. And even though in some of his businesses, he's realizing negative 22% year-over-year declines, he's seeing that some of his managers, in fact, a lot of his managers are seeing uh, things are down a lot more than they thought they would be six months ago. And part of that could be because of prior orders basically keeping the pipeline full. And now they're slowing down. Even the railroads, which transport a lot of essential goods for the businesses Warren Buffett invests in, uh, even railroads are seeing the slowdown. He's seeing the slowdown, but he ultimately just says, look, he's been doing this for well over 50 years, probably well over 60 years at this point. The one thing to focus on is providing good value and making sure you're doing the right thing. You're not a criminal. You're putting one foot in front of the other. And you're investing in basically pricing power style investment. It's a fantastic insight. Really, it doesn't matter what economists say. In fact, he says, he goes as far as saying that economists are a waste of money. And that if there's an economist providing projections at a company, they should not uh, be spending money on that person. In other words, the company is wasting their time and money listening to that person because nobody knows. The biggest thing that matters are numbers. He's asked about the credit crunch or the banking crisis, and he suggests, hey, you know what? The banking crisis probably isn't over. There's probably more damage to come. And a lot of people ask me, they say, Kevin, uh, and, and I'm not trying to compare myself to Buffett. I'm just simply, you know, people ask me, they're like, Kevin, what do you think about the banking crisis? Like, is it, is it going to get worse? And the reality is there are always going to be companies at the fringes that go bankrupt, especially during recessionary times, always. That, that will always occur. There is no doubt that in recessionary times, businesses will fail. Those will be banks. Those will be companies that you know and love. Those will be companies that you hate. There will always be companies that fail. That is extremely normal. So am I terribly concerned about a banking crisis? No. Am I terribly concerned about credit conditions tightening? Not terribly. There was a fantastic piece in The Economist this morning, though, that did make a fantastic argument. And the fantastic argument they made uh, was actually, I wrote it down right here. They say, uh, the final source of stress will be firms' own liquidity. That is, companies have been basically able to pull inexpensive debt. But if there are future shocks, being able to pull new liquidity going forward may become more difficult. So maybe we haven't seen the full shocks yet because we need another shock to actually strain businesses. And then we will see a real liquidity crunch. And it's an interesting argument because it basically says, don't look at the banking crisis today and try to find what the explanation is for credit crunch 
today. Instead, look for what a credit crunch could potentially do during the next shock. Now, Warren Buffett does the usual when it comes to Bitcoin. He says Bitcoin has the same allure as playing Russian roulette. In other words, he alludes or uh, associates it with gambling. He says that uh, Taiwan Semiconductors is the best in its field. It was uh, his decision to end up parting with the company. Sometimes he does that because he sees a better opportunity somewhere else. And in his case, it seems to be cash because they've got about $100 bill a million dollars in cash sitting around. Uh, do keep in mind, they've been spending a lot of money on stocks as well. Uh, Warren Buffett uh, calls uh, AI technology extraordinary. Uh, he does cite some concerns with it. Uh, he says that inflation is a constant threat to a country because ultimately you fade away the value of a dollar, and this is why you invest in assets. Uh, although Warren Buffett does invest heavily in cash, a lot of that money is held in treasuries. He says he's not into commercial paper. He prefers treasuries. He does say there could be further bank uh, failures and that the government won't save shareholders from troubled banks, which – they really shouldn't. Uh, he says that troubled banks are not value stocks. This is something I've mentioned as well, is that I think troubled banks could be a way to maybe speculate and gamble, but uh, in the long term, they're not something I would want to hold. He says, uh, let's see here, dumb things banks do lead to mistakes and bank failures. So I think that's a great argument. Basically, it puts the blame where it belongs, right on the banks. Take a look at some of the other things he says. He uh, does talk about streaming. I think this is a fantastic lesson as well when he talks about streaming. He talks about streaming as basically being a very low pricing power business. He doesn't use the words pricing power, but he talks about streaming being a, quote, not really good business. In other words, uh, Becky Quick responds and says, you mean it's for suckers? And he kind of laughs and says, well, it's just fundamentally it isn't a good business. And that's because even though it attracts people, the way you attract more subscribers is by lowering the price. And that's the opposite of pricing power, right? Uh, and, and he says, look, what they're offering people is they're offering content for peanuts. Do they really have the ability to raise prices, he says. Now, so he gives a lot of negatives for maybe a Disney or a Netflix. One of the reasons I haven't been exposing myself to Disney stock is because I feel like they're taking the profitable business and they're putting all that money into the unprofitable business of streaming, kind of like with Facebook. And look, I know Facebook stock has done fantastically over the past few months from the bottom, obviously. I mean, if you time anything at the bottom, the stock will have done fantastically. But I hate that they're taking a very profitable ad business and dumping all of that money into the metaverse, which I don't believe in, in terms of a future. Uh, I actually think that augmented reality will be a substantially uh, uh, more profitable and will be substantially closer to our near-term reality than virtual reality. Uh, augmented is, is think about kind of like wearing glasses and then maybe having like your Twitter feed off to the, your peripheral vision or something, just as an example. Uh, that that's more of just my prediction, though, uh, not something that Warren Buffett talked about. But uh, I do think it's very interesting how he regularly, when it comes to analyzing businesses, talks about pricing. What is their ability to get somebody to part with their cash? Uh, and think about the businesses that he pays that, that that he owns. I mean, some of the biggest businesses, Apple, right, Coca Cola, Seas Candy. These aren't discount businesses by any means. None of them are businesses where people go to them because they're the cheapest. Consider a company that uh, Warren Buffett holds uh, called NetJets. It's a uh, charter uh, airline company. It is a company that um, that is a premium service. There are cheaper services, for example, like Wheels Up, uh, private air charters. Uh, however, NetJets, which is a non-public uh, company, it's owned by Berkshire Hathaway and, and Hull, uh, it's a quality product. And it's solely focused on making their customers happy. Now, I've used multiple different charter services, and I'll tell you, NetJets is the best. By far, it's the best. It's the highest quality. They're the ones that make sure you have catered food when you come. The other companies don't do that. They have the nicest planes. They have the nicest service. They seem to have the best pilots. Warren Buffett focuses on quality. Uh, I mean, consider Ketchup. Uh, it's such a simple company. But why invest in Ketchup? Well, <laughs> in, uh, in, in the eyes of Warren Buffett. People are willing to pay for it, no matter what the price is. Such a simple business. Look at his 20.4% stake in American Express. American Express caters to the higher income customer, the premium brand. So I think it's fascinating. I think he's got some really great arguments in terms of the businesses that he holds. Some of the companies that he invests in, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not the biggest fan of investing. Uh, directly in companies uh, like, uh, most specifically at this point, companies like Bank of America, 
but that may be because when I got started in the real estate business, I had terrible experiences with the Bank of America, uh, especially after their countrywide takeover. But who, hey, who knows? Maybe things have gotten better. Uh, he's also got smaller exposure to some of the staples like Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, uh, UPS. These are businesses I'm not terribly excited about myself. And of course, he's made a lot of money investing in uh, some companies like Occidental Petroleum or Chevron. And a lot of these companies, the way he's describing them is having potentially pricing power, not only because of the fact that we need oil, but also uh, that they're moving into these carbon tire capture technologies and green technologies. I will say, though, one of the problems with the carbon technology or carbon capture technologies, for example, at Occidental Petroleum, is that they're massive money losers. If you look at the annual 10K report for Occidental Petroleum, massive money loser. Uh, you, you, you solely lose money on carbon capture technology. And so I think it's sort of the companies are doing that to try to appear green, to make regulators a little bit happier, or shareholders a little happier, so that way people have a defense. And eventually those technologies will be good. These companies have the money to make the investments and sort of make have losses over there, so, so maybe that makes sense. But uh, in, in the more grand scheme of things here, I think Warren Buffett has, has made a fantastic argument this morning uh, on his um, CNBC interview that you want to focus on where pricing power is. And whether that is a simple product, again, like ketchup or Coca-Cola, or it is a premium product like Apple, focus on pricing power, and ultimately you win. And that is something that he clearly said without saying, right? The, and, and I think the best example was the, the his actual quote on streaming, which was his actual quote on streaming. I wrote it down right here. Uh, it isn't fundamentally a good business. You've got some people with deep pockets who won't quit, but what they're offering people is for peanuts. Can they raise prices? Eh. That was sort of his quote. And I thought it was fantastic because it reiterates so much of what we talk about on the channel. Uh, and again, anything I could do to compare myself to Warren Buffett, I, I don't want to say that I'm trying to pat myself on the back here. I'm not, I'm not at all. I'm just saying I think that is the right path to be trending on. Anytime you could be on the trend towards uh, towards where Warren Buffett goes, I think that's a, that is a great starting point. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, so that gives me uh, some opinion or that shares some opinion on Warren Buffett. Let's next talk a little bit about uh, the Fed. And let me see here what Wall Street has to say about the Fed. So stand by for the Fed. CPI, Fed, bond market. Okay, let's see here. American Air says quarterly profit, likely below estimates. So we got a little heads up there on American Air. That just came in. Okay, so the minutes are coming out today as well. The FOMC minutes will be out in about four hours. The minutes are likely to show uh, this this price stability mandate. We're gonna these are gonna be the first minutes coming into or coming out of rather well hold on let me, let me check really quick let me see when was the last meeting fomc meeting i think it was the february 22nd oh these minutes are going to be good oh my gosh let me give you a preview on this hold on a second here meeting was the 22nd oh these minutes are going to be fantastic uh 